We're with Hugh Song. Welcome, Hugh. How Thank are you? you? Thank you again. Uh, Good to see you. Great. Private lesson sound bites. And uh, I am so interested in the things that you're doing. But let's introduce you first. You are the director of uh, recital programs at the Curtis Institute of Music. And we're in your studio, right? Yes, yes. So what does the director of recital programs do? The director of recital programs schedules all the recitals and also helps coordinate the outside recitals. But that's only the first half of my title. The right. second half is director of instrumental accompaniment. So I'm actually not only directing recitals, I'm also directing the staff pianists in their collaborative work with the other instrumental students. Do you coach? Uh, I do coaching, okay. but I'm also doing a lot of playing. So I'm really right. exposed to all facets of the instrumental side of the school. That's great. Um, about a year ago, I saw you uh, perform with Aaron Roseanne. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And you used this device that you're holding in your hand mm -hmm. uh, to play. It was a Brahms sonata. Mm -hmm. And it was just wonderful. Uh, there was no page turner. Right. Everything just went smoothly. I just listened to music. Nothing yeah. interfered. Yeah. So tell me what it is that you're holding and how long have you been uh, using this device uh, in your performance? This is a tablet PC. I have been a paperless pianist for about six years, believe it or not. This technology has been around for a little while. What I love, as you mentioned, what I love most about this is the fact that this is not only powerful technology, it's very inobtrusive. So I've played concerts where I play chamber music and I've had folks come up to me and say, how did you memorize that whole program? Because they don't see me putting my hand up to turn the page or anything like that. So what I've been developing is uh, a couple of things to help uh, fill in the gaps. Uh, there, the, um, the technology market has not been directly serving the musician's market. So while these computers came out about six years ago, um, there really wasn't any well-working software for reading or annotating music. And uh, particularly, there weren't really any decent ways to turn pages. Now my dream was to not only be able to have all of my music in one device, but to have some system to turn pages. Now that last part turned out to be the most difficult thing to solve. I did um, an extensive sh search on the internet back then for foot switches. because so I thought, you know, I want to keep my hands on the page, find some way to turn the page with my foot, my free foot. I use my left foot for turning pages. And believe it or not, it was extremely difficult. It's noisy also, right? If well, you're yeah, the first, yeah. for the first several years, I, all I had were these transcription, programmable transcription pedals that were big, heavy, and noisy. They would click very audibly. I remember my early recording sessions, I would try to bring in towels and, and rugs and try to cover those things that muffle the clicks, but it, it was a real problem. Um, I met with a couple of friends, we kind of cobbled together a custom pedal, but again... Is this the new product that you're no, talking about? No, no, no. Oh, no. Now, now we've yeah, kind yeah. of gone advanced a little ah, bit further. Okay. So actually, um, I just started a new company that is now developing what I think is the ultimate page turner device. Um, basically, it hands-free okay, and wire-free. Great. This is the thing that I have with some of my pedals. I would walk out on stage, have this pedal, but then I have to uncoil it, stick it under the pedal, plug right. it into the machine. Right. It's very awkward looking. But now, just coming out on the stage, being able to turn pages forward, backwards, with the it's it's That's telepathy. Beautiful. <laughs> That's beautiful. <laughs> it's I not like telepathy, that. but actually, what it is, it's a foot switch attached to a wireless transmitter. This is what we have. It's called the Air Turn. This is your new product. This is our new wireless. product. Right. Okay. And believe it or not, um, mm -hmm. there really has been anything like that in the market. Um, this is the receiver. But well, it's good to be first, you know. Well, we're not <laughs> first. There were there was actually another company that uh, another Korean company that tried to come up with a wireless page turning pedal, and I bought it. I thought it was going to be the greatest thing since sliced bread, and it just did not work. In fact, I was playing the Shostakovich violin concerto in the middle of the performance. The thing decided not to work, That's and funny. I'm like freaking out in the middle of the scared so I'm like, this is not working. Getting my finger to push, you know, turn the pages manually. Oh, it's horrible. Okay. So it failed miserably. <laughs> okay. All right. Well, this is this is uh, very cool. Um, what is the size of your library on that computer? See, this is now. Now you're starting to touch on why this is so revolutionary. Uh -huh. uh, I have my entire library here. How many works 6, are there? Six thousand oh, works. That's fair. Okay. Uh, you know. 
uh, one thing, you know, from being an accompanist to being a collaborative pianist, every year we would have auditions. In fact, as of this taping, uh, we're just about getting ready to head into audition season. Right. So for, you know, the violins, we would have to bring in literally stacks and stacks of concertos. Boxes and boxes. And, and you play all of the auditions. I play all of them, yeah. yeah, yeah. Play, play the auditions. For all of the violin. Right, come flutes, you know, flute and, you know, you're talking about hundreds of pieces of music. Sure. And, you know, running to the library, hoping that they have that score. Some kid has checked it out. You've got to... Oh, my goodness. The, the physical limitations of just making right. sure you have enough music and have everything there, and then finding it in the middle of an audition. Oh, what, what I am I... have a follow-up question. Then how do you get it in there? Okay. Where do you get it? Number of options. Um, there are now... I mean, this is, a, this is what it's, what's so interesting. There, it's a growing industry. You have more and more online vendors that are selling directly uh, for download. So you can go to sites like everynote.com, right. virtualsheetmusic.com, and, and they have scores in PDF formats. Mm -hmm. uh, many of them are older public domain versions. Some of them are kind of reformatted uh, using Finale and Sibelius, but they're mostly in PDF uh, file formats, so you just buy them. They're, they tend to be very, very cheap. Mm -hmm. Download them directly, because this is a full computer, so you have full access to the internet. Um, so that's one option. Another option is to buy CDs. CD Sheet Music um, sells complete collections. So for $20, that's right. the entire work, uh, a collection of Chopin can be in your computer. So uh, just give me a snapshot, just before we wrap up, um, um, give me a snapshot of where the industry is right now. Where do you see it going? And right. Well, uh, t to be honest, our technology, I'm just going to pull up my little pedal here. Sure. Um, our air turn transmitter, I think in some ways, is two steps ahead of the curve. Um, while, while I've been you know, with um, paperless technologies for six years, one of the things I've observed is that musicians overall have a very difficult time grasping the idea. Why should I bother transitioning from paper to, to digital, paper to pixels? Um, and I think one of our jobs is going to be to educate the market in terms of, again, just you know, simple advantages like turning the pages without lifting your hands. It sounds so well. innocuous. <laughs> but you know, then you start looking at the horror well, that's stories. That's a wonderful that thing, too. It is a wonderful thing. And it's one of those things that, for musicians, you don't appreciate it until you experience it. It's very difficult to show. Here's another example. If you want, I don't know if you want to pan this around. But, yeah, you, know, you don't necessarily need tablet PCs. That happens to be my computer of choice. But here's a regular old laptop. Okay. Now, with this laptop, notice how much larger the screen is. With this particular program, it does an intelligent uh, analysis of the image of the music, and when you scroll down, it'll automatically realign itself so that you're not, for instance, you know, if you do this with a regular document, sometimes the staves will line up, sometimes they won't. This automatically recognizes where the staves are and will correctly align each half of the page. So look how much wider I can blow this up. Imagine having a monitor. So for those folks who have difficulty or, or sight impaired, there's a lot of musicians I know, older musicians who would love to continue playing, this is a real solution. That's great. And again, for collaborative pianists like myself, where we have hundreds of scores that we have to work with on a daily basis, we have our whole library with us. Another example, I mean, with these things, I didn't get a chance to show you, but uh, you, know, you have all the benefits of paper and pencil. I'll show you really quickly. For example, if I'm writing fingerings here, I can draw on the screen with a digital pen. Non-destructively. Wonderful. Okay. And also versioning, right? Right, yeah, exactly. Yeah. So versioning simply means if I'm playing an audition with uh, you know, 30 different violinists playing right. Tchaikovsky Violin Concerto, uh, rather than having you know, to either rewrite the scribbling and trying to figure out is this this person's, that the person's, tempi or whatever, yeah. I can take one score, right. save as copy number one, copy number five, copy number 12, and each score is its own unique version, customized to the person I'm accompanying. So uh, you really can can customize your work with whoever you're collaborating with. Hugh, this is um, a fascinating story. This is great. Uh, there's a big direction ahead of you. There is, and I think the potential is huge. Again, I think the key thing is to realize that we're on the cusp of some amazing possibilities. I think you know, music literacy is going to explode with some of these technologies our performance practices are going to get both simultaneously easier and more powerful. Uh, pedagogy is going is ready, almost ready to explode. If we can just harness some of these technologies and realize if we can get over that initial fear barrier, have an open mind, I think there are some tremendous possibilities 
to really see a new golden age in classical music and, and music in general. Fantastic. Thank you. Thank you. My pleasure. <laughs>